fascinating as fuck. Jeremy Meeks, the man whose mugshot was so sexy that it landed him a modeling contract while he was still in jail. He served 13 months and shortly after his release, he walked in New York Fashion Week. Eric Money is the only player to score points for both teams in a single NBA game. When the Nets played the Sixers in 1978, he scored for the Nets before being traded to the Sixers in the middle of the game. In World War II, British soldiers used well bikes, a small motorcycle that could fit in an air canister and be dropped out of planes with a parachute. On New Year's Eve in 2020, a friendly soccer match was played between rival drug cartels. However, it quickly became not so friendly when the match ended with 16 deaths and 5 severe injuries. During the making of Prince of Egypt, animators who failed or messed up were sent to work on Shrek. This was seen as a form of punishment known as getting Shreked. This mother and her 10-month-old baby were murdered by the cartel. 16-year-old Alyssa Perez was found deceased holding her 10-month-old baby, Nicholas, in a ditch in Tulare, California. Officers arrived to the home around 4 a.m. after someone called police about a large number of gunshots. When they entered the home, they found another victim in the doorway and there were three more bodies inside, including an older woman. All the victims were murdered by a gunshot to the head and two other women actually survived by hiding in a nearby trailer. It's been said that Alyssa tried to run away with her baby, but then she was found and murdered. Investigators believe that this was a gang-related attack and that they were trying to send a message. But after further investigation, police records revealed that the week prior, a search warrant was done on the property and guns, marijuana, and meth were found, which is why they concluded that this crime was drug-related. Police also mentioned that the manner and swiftness of the killings suggested that the men were experienced in murder. What was the Cincinnati Crawler? In 1974, the Johnson family in Cincinnati noticed a couple of weird things happening in their home. Their 14-year-old daughter, Claire, would complain of seeing glowing eyes outside her window at night and the feeling of being watched. One night, the youngest son, Timmy, was laying in bed in the dark when he felt the family dog jump onto his bed. Except that when he went to pet it, it wasn't the dog, but the Cincinnati Crawler who immediately fled the scene. Till date, police think that the crawler is responsible for the disappearance of four other boys in the area. While some believe that he was an escaped convict, others believe that he was actually the victim of human experiments that may have been conducted by the family's dad. However, we only know what he looks like from a photo Claire snapped before he escaped, leading many to wonder. We need to talk about this photo because Josh Maddox was found inside this chimney with his knees bent over his head and he had been there for seven years. So what happened to him and how did he end up stuck inside a chimney for that long? Allegedly, Josh went out on a walk one day and completely disappeared until one day a builder from Colorado Springs wanted to demolish his old abandoned cabin. And that's when Josh was found curled up and mummified inside the chimney. But the strange thing is, even though his body was found with its knees bent over his head, there were no injuries or broken bones. The coroner who performed Josh's autopsy believes he crawled up the chimney himself, and he curled up in that position to protect himself from something. But this case gets even more bizarre from here. Not only was Josh found in such an unnatural position, but he was found only wearing a thermal suit. The rest of his clothes were in the cabin neatly folded. So why would he fold up his clothes and then crawl up the chimney? The chimney also had a heavy steel mesh grate built into it, so it would have been impossible for anyone to slide back down the chimney. Many people disagree, but this terrible incident incident was eventually ruled as an accident, even though we'll never truly know what Josh wanted to protect himself from by crawling up the chimney. Follow for more. If you're thinking about ignoring your gut instinct, don't. Here are three reasons why you should trust it. BuzzFeed user Vodka Sunshine said that when she was in college, there was this really cute guy in one of her classes. A week or two in, they had to work together on a small project, and she was pretty excited about the opportunity to get to know him. After speaking to him, though, she got a really bad vibe from him, but nothing specific that she could put her finger on. She said that she lost all attraction to him and knew that she should keep her distance. A month or two later, 
later, their teacher announced that the guy had been arrested for murdering a girl he was dating. Reddit user Helios21 said that he was at a club on a boardwalk with some buddies in Puerto Rico. He said that he just didn't feel right and he told them that they should leave. They fussed and moaned, but eventually they all left. Before they even hit the parking lot, a massive shootout broke out inside the club. The front door guy was shot to death and a few of the people inside were as well. It was literal pandemonium, people screaming and running everywhere. The ride back to their place was quiet, but they all knew. They got really lucky that night. Reddit user BreakTD said that over 20 years ago when he was 17 or so, two of his buddies came to pick him up to get the night started. He got in the back of their car, but as soon as he sat down, he had a feeling of impending doom rush over him. He said that he had never felt that feeling before, and never felt it since. He immediately asked to be let out with some excuse and said that they would catch up later. He got out, and he said the feeling quickly faded, so he went on about his day. About two hours later, he catches up with some other friends, and they immediately tell him that the two friends that came to pick him up earlier were involved in a major car accident. Both were seriously hurt and in the hospital. The accident happened about 10 minutes after they tried to pick him up. They both survived. The car did not survive though. It was struck in the passenger side rear right where he would have been sitting. Reddit user BreakTD said that he was pretty positive after seeing the damage done that he would not have survived. The orphan was based on a real story. In 2007, a 33 year old Czech Republic woman named Barbara Skrilova used her rare disease, hypopertuitism, to pose as a 13 year old girl and trick two sisters. Clara and Katerina Marova into adopting her. She quickly took advantage of the schizophrenic sisters and manipulated them into joining a cult called the Grail Movement, which promoted child abuse and cannibalism, amongst other aberrations. Barbara soon got jealous of Clara's biological children and schemed to get rid of them. She broke things and pinned the blame on the two children and convinced the two sisters that they needed to be punished in the form of torture. Eventually, a neighbor caught the signal of a wireless camera and reported them to the police, but not before Barbara posed as a 12-year-old girl called Annika and got adopted by another family, fleeing the country. Eventually, she was caught and extradited to the Czech Republic. But did you know that? If you've seen enough of my videos, you probably think you know what's in that suitcase, but you're wrong. In May of 2004, several pieces of luggage washed up on a shore in Virginia, each case containing the body parts of an unidentified person. Immediately, an investigation was launched, and a facial reconstruction of the body led to Melanie McGuire. Melanie, who was having an affair with her boss, had purchased a gun and shot her husband Bill multiple times. She then dismembered his body, packed it into three separate suitcases, and dumped them into Chesapeake Bay. And on July 19th, 2007, at the age of 34, Melanie McGuire was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. This was the moment Cameron Heron realized he was sentenced to 24 years in prison. Cameron was a normal 18-year-old boy living in Tampa, Florida in 2018. He had also recently graduated high school and to congratulate him, his parents got him a black Ford Mustang. On May 23, 2018, Cameron and his brother Tristan had gone to a local gym. While they were there, they had also run into an old friend of theirs named John Berenot. Once they were done at the gym, all three of the friends got into their cars. Cameron and Tristan were in the black Ford Mustang while John was in his own car. As they approached a street light, both of the cars were side by side and that's where they got the brilliant idea to do some street racing. Both of the cars sped up very quickly, reaching over 100 miles an hour. At the same time, a mother and her young child were crossing the street. Unfortunately, the cars were just going way too fast in order for her to make it across the street in time. Her name was Jessica and her daughter's name was Lilia. And unfortunately, it was a direct hit. John was able to swerve past her, but unfortunately, Cameron ended up hitting her head on. All Cameron could do was watch Jessica and Lilia's bodies fly into the air as he hit them. Moments after the crash, Jessica's husband David Robinault passed by in his own car. At the time that he was passing by, he had no idea that his wife had just been involved in a major accident. He noticed there was a huge crowd of people looking at the accident, but he just wanted to get home and hope that no one had gotten hurt too badly. 
David then tried to call his wife, but she wasn't answering, and when he went home, she wasn't there either. He then figured that she must have seen the accident, so he went to go see for himself. And when he got there, that's when he noticed that his wife and baby stroller was right there in the middle of the street. Immediately, chills went down his spine when he realized that his wife and daughter had been the victims of this horrible accident. Unfortunately, Jessica passed away the same day as the accident and Lilia tried to fight but she passed away the following day. Immediately, both Cameron and John were charged since they were the ones driving. John took a plea deal and was given 6 years in prison with 15 years of probation. Cameron took an open plea but to his surprise and his family's surprise, he was given 24 years in prison. And right away, people were absolutely torn about this decision. The judge believed that Cameron had shown no remorse and he also had a history of racing recklessly. Meanwhile, supporters of Cameron believed that the punishment was way too harsh considering that he was 18 years old when the entire thing happened. And today, he's still in prison. Let me know what you guys think. It's time for cookies and crime. We're still on the topic of love or lack thereof and this case is Clara Harris. Clara Harris was a Colombian immigrant and was named Mrs. Columbia Houston and worked as a dentist. She married David Harris on February 14, 1992. Coincidence? I think not. David was an orthodontist and together they owned a chain of dental offices. They had successful businesses and the couple was able to afford an upscale home and lifestyle in Friendswood, Texas. On the outside, they seemed happily married. They had three kids, a nice house, and a couple of expensive cars. Life was great right up until David admitted he was having an affair with his former receptionist. Desperate to keep her husband, Clara tried everything to win him back. She quit her job and began working out. She dyed her hair, worked on her tan, and even scheduled a breast enhancement surgery. But when her plans failed, she got even more desperate. Clara hired a private detective to tail the two lovebirds, and on July 24, 2002, she got a call. The investigator had followed the couple to the Nassau Bay Hilton in Houston. And to add insult to injury, that's the same hotel where Clara and David had gotten married. Infuriated, Clara grabbed her keys and her 16-year-old stepdaughter, David's biological daughter, and sped off in her Mercedes. When she reached the Hilton, Clara stormed inside the lobby and attacked her rival, tearing at her until they were escorted outside by hotel security. Still on a high of adrenaline and furious, Clara rushed back to her car and as the adulterer walked away outside she hit the gas with her stepdaughter in the car the car slammed into David sending him into the air and even before touching the ground Clara hit him again this time she waited for David to land before running him over three times. Ironically, her private investigator was there and had recorded the whole incident. Clara's daughter spoke against her having been in the car. She was found guilty of murdering her husband, and on February 14, 2003, a trend here, she was sentenced to 20 years in prison, the maximum sentence allowed by the jury's sudden passion finding. The murder was ruled a crime of passion. I don't know about you guys, but I find the ruling of crime of passion so interesting because it's a ruling that considers people's emotions and how sometimes it's so uncontrollable it makes us do crazy things. Claire was released on parole May 11th, 2018 and was released from parole this month. This is part two on the case of 16-year-old Susana Morales and how a police officer has been accused of murdering her. Near Susana's body, police found a that belonged to 22-year-old Miles Bryant, who was currently a police officer for the Doravel Police Department. When detectives discovered that a police officer was found near the crime scene, they were very confused. I mean, this can't really be a coincidence. They start looking deeper into Miles, and that's when they discovered that on July 27th, Miles actually reported his as missing. He claims he accidentally left his truck unlocked and that someone broke into the truck, they stole his weapon, they stole his military ID, and they also stole his wallet. Now, Miles filed this police report at around 11 a.m. on July 27th, just two hours after Susana's family had reported her as missing. Now, what are the odds that this guy's weapon was stolen two hours after Susana was reported missing? And then that same weapon was found near Susana's body. It just didn't make sense, so detectives looked further into him, and that's when they discovered that Miles Bryant actually lived at the 
the Sterling Glen apartments, the same apartments that Susana was at the night that she disappeared. Not only did he live there, but he also worked as a courtesy security officer for the building. Now, all of this is no longer a coincidence, so on February 13th, 2023, 22-year-old Miles Bryant was arrested and charged for the murder and kidnapping of 16-year-old Susana Morales. He was also accused of filing a false police report since he claims that his weapon was stolen, but in reality, it wasn't. When Susana's family heard that a police officer was arrested for her murder, they just couldn't believe it. They said that a police officer being involved was the last thing that they ever suspected. They never thought to themselves, oh, maybe a cop did it. Like, this was just so surprising. Family says that they had no idea who Miles Bryant was and that they don't believe that Susana knew him. Police have also come out and said that they haven't been able to find any type of connection between Susana or Miles Bryant. This possibly is a stranger on stranger crime. So this is what police think happened. The night of July 26, 2022, Susana Morales did leave the Sterling Glen apartments at around 9.40 p.m. Then, somewhere between 10 p.m. and 10.30 p.m., detectives believe that Susana encountered Bryant and that he possibly offered her a ride home. So he did have his patrol car with him. He would always take it home with him. So police don't know if he did use his car or his power as a police officer to lure Susana into his car. Maybe he saw Susana walking home by herself and he decided to approach her and said, oh, I'm a cop, I can give you a ride home. It's possible that he did use his power as a police officer to get Susana to get inside his vehicle and to trust him. Detectives believe that somewhere between between 10 p.m. and 2 o'clock in the morning on July 27th, Susana was killed. The cause of death has not been revealed yet, but at this time, detectives don't believe that she was... Yes, the weapon was found near her body, but they don't believe that's what killed her. As police dug further into Bryant, they discovered that he had a history of stalking and harassing women. For now, Bryant remains behind bars, and I just truly hope that Susana Morales gets the justice that she does. Buster Murdoch has finally put out a statement. Buster is the son of Alec Murdoch, a former South Carolina lawyer who was recently convicted of murdering his wife and son, aka Buster's mother and brother. Buster testified for his father's defense in the trial, but there have also been a lot of rumors and suspicion around Buster's involvement in the death of a 19-year-old man, Stephen Smith. Stephen Smith was found dead on the side of the road on July 8, 2015. One pathologist said that it seemed that he had been hit by a vehicle. However, the team that responded to the scene said that there were no vehicle debris, no skid marks, or injuries consistent with someone being struck by a vehicle. There was no real evidence that he was struck, but his death basically was ruled accidental. About two years ago, when investigators started looking into the deaths of Maggie and Paul Murdoch, they also reopened the investigation into Stephen Smith's death. This was because of information that they learned while investigating the murders. There has recently been a lot of suspicion online that Buster and or Paul could have been involved in Stephen's death. Since then, Stephen's family have raised money to exhume his body and do a private independent autopsy. They are seeking a new unbiased look at his body and an accurate determination of his cause of death based on facts. This will be happening soon and they are hopeful that he will get justice. Since Buster's father was convicted of the murders, there's been a lot of suspicion around him and his potential involvement in Stephen Smith's death. Nothing has been proven and it's all alleged so far. But today, Buster Murdoch came out with a statement. He said, I have tried my best to ignore the vicious rumors about my involvement in Stephen Smith's tragic death that continue to be published in the media as I grieve over the brutal murders of my mother and brother. I love them so much and miss them terribly. I haven't spoken up until now because I want to live in private while I cope with their deaths and my father's incarceration. Before, during, and since my father's trial, I have been targeted and harassed by a media and followers of this story. This has gone on far too long. These baseless rumors of my involvement with Stephen and his death are false. He continued, I unequivocally deny any involvement in his death and my heart goes out to the Smith family. I'm requesting that the media immediately stop publishing these defamatory comments and rumors about me. So as I said, everything that has come out about Buster's potential involvement in Stephen's death is alleged, nothing has been proven. Hopefully the new independent autopsy will provide some answers and clarity as to what happened to Steven. And hopefully if he was killed by somebody and his death was not an accident, he will get justice. This is the story of Khaleesia William, a 16-year-old girl murdered while recording what would be her last TikTok video. Disclaimer, the video is to bring awareness to Khaleesia William's story and meant to cause no harm. Please pray for the friends and the family of the victim.
Atlanta, Georgia, gained national news in 2020 after a horrifying death of a young girl. In December 2020, Calicia Williams, a 16-year-old high school student, received an invite to a party that was going to be held at an Airbnb. This party would be chaperoned by an adult. Calicia's stepfather, Ronnie Savoy, encouraged her to go to the event since she had been confined to her house since the lockdown due to COVID-19. He's supposed to be in an Airbnb with a couple of more friends from school and the mother. They'd have done this once before, so we was a little comfortable of letting her go the second time. And we spoke to the mother, and she said she was going to be there. April Smith, Calicia's mother agreed with her daughter getting some time out of the house and enjoying herself. The chaperone informed Calicia's parents that the event would be an Airbnb party for children and that she would be responsible for everything. The parents felt at ease and decided that sending Calicia to spend the night would be good for her. At 12.02 am, Calicia is seen performing a dance routine in her TikTok video when someone suddenly entered her room without knocking. The teen looked shocked and afraid then suddenly stops filming her video. The sound of gunshots could be heard from her room a few minutes later. Partygoers were unaware of what happened to Calicia. Two guys discovered Calicia on the floor of her hotel room. They carried her to the elevator while holding her from behind and supporting her legs. As of 12.27 am, authorities had been notified about an earlier disturbance at Hyatt Regency. Following their arrival, the cops went to check on Calicia. She wasn't breathing and had no pulse. She was then transferred to the hospital, where she remained for some time. The medical staff tried to save Calicia's life but were unsuccessful. The 16-year-old was pronounced dead in the hospital. Calicia's parents called the chaperone to check on the well-being of their child but were only informed about their child's death eight hours after she passed. It was a shock to Calicia's parents to learn of what had happened to their daughter. They were enraged because the chaperone had failed to tell them sooner of the occurrence. The hotel room was in her name, so I feel like she should be held accountable for my daughter's death as well. They didn't learn the group was staying at a Hyatt Regency until they received a horrific call the next day. Like, this is the morgue. And I was like, the morgue? They was like, yes, ma'am. They was like, well, we're waiting on your daughter's body to come through. I'm like, whoa. Khaleesi's parents say that call didn't come until 8.45 a.m. The teen was pronounced dead at 12.23 in the morning. Calicia's parents were also unaware that the party had moved to Hyatt Regency Hotel instead of the Airbnb that was previously discussed. The parents felt like the chaperone should be held accountable for the tragedy that happened to their daughter since she took responsibility for the safety of the children at the party and her parents only allowed Calicia to attend the party on the assurance that the chaperone would look after her. Atlanta Police Department reports that Calicia knew her attacker. Anthony Grant, the police spokesman of the Atlanta Police Department reported as follows. Preliminary investigation suggests that the victim was inside of a room at the Hyatt Regency with a juvenile male companion. A verbal dispute occurred between both parties which resulted in the juvenile male fatally shooting the victim. The juvenile is a 16-year-old boy, but identity is being concealed. A 16-year-old boy was taken into custody by Atlanta police and taken to Atlanta police headquarters for additional questioning. At this time, the boy admitted to shooting Calicia after they got into a heated argument. Police then arrested the boy and charged him with felony murder, aggravated assault, and possession of a gun by someone younger than 18 years of age. The defendant is now being tried in an Atlanta court pending the court's ultimate judgment. Calicia's parents also hold the hotel staff responsible for her child's death and they protested outside of the Hyatt Regency Hotel along with supporters to express their outrage at the hotel's negligence that resulted in their daughter's death. I want the, the surveillance footage of what happened you know who would